I'm Doug Sillers. I'm originally from Seattle, w w Seattle, Washington in the States, but I've been traveling with my family all around Europe for like the last two and a half years. Um, so a little bit about me real quick. I do developer relations. I talk with developer communities. I help companies figure out how to talk with developer communities. I help people speed up their websites and speed up their native apps because slow websites and apps I'll talk about are bad. People don't like them. I wrote a book for O'Reilly called High Performance Android Apps. You can't see the URL because it's way at the bottom here, but I'll post the slides. That's the PDF, so if you want to download it, feel free to download the PDF. Um, and then if you ever want to talk about performance, developer relations, any of those things, I'm the only Doug Sillers on the internet, so I'm really easy to find. Um, Twitter, Gmail, website, all that. Um, so before we start talking about images, um, this is Grindelwald, this cliff, the first cliff walk in, in, in Switzerland. So how many of you get nervous thinking about walking across this walkway that's literally nailed into the side of an Alp? Like it's up in the mountains, right? Uh, when I walked across this with my family, my six-year-old jumped the whole way. So the, the walkway rattled the whole time. Um, but what's interesting about this is about three years ago, Ericsson did a study and they put sensors on people's heads to measure stress responses. And they found that queuing up for a line raised people's stress. They found that thinking about walking on the edge of a cliff raised people's stress. But they actually found that standing on that a slow mobile website or slow mobile app is more stressful than standing on the edge of a cliff. So that feeling that you all had a few minutes, a few seconds ago, that's what your customers feel like if you build a slow app or a slow website on mobile. And so we don't want stuff to be slow because if it's slow and people are frustrated, they don't come back, they buy less stuff, right? And these are not things that we want to have happen with our website. We want people to buy stuff. We want them to um, be engaged and want to come back. There's a lot of research. Google found that uh, a three second delay causes half of your people to leave a mobile website. Um, a half second delay increases frustration and lowers engagement. Like almost 20 years ago, Amazon and Walmart found 100 milliseconds causes a drop in revenue, a measurable drop of revenue. I mean, it's 1%, but for Amazon, 1% is a, that's a lot of, for anybody, 1% is a lot of money. And then 4% of mobile users admit to throwing their phone when there's a slow mobile website. So these are all things we should avoid doing. So when we start thinking about how we could speed up a website or speed up the content that's showing up in our mobile app, whether it's an app or a website, it works both ways. If we look in the web, these are mobile websites, a random 10,000 mobile websites. You can see that images are here in blue and images are usually somewhere between, you know, they, the smallest websites, we're talking 40% of the website is images. For larger websites, we're over almost 80% of content are images. So if we're trying to speed up a web page, if we can get 50% of the content smaller, that web page is going to load faster. So let's see what we can do to optimize our images so that the web page loads faster. Have any of you used Lighthouse before? Has anyone heard of Lighthouse? All right, so this is mobile web stuff, but it's, a, it's an auditing tool built by Chrome. It's in uh, Chrome DevTools, it's in web page test, and it does an audit for four image optimizations on the mobile web. And I spent a lot of time in mobile. Are you guys mostly mobile app developers versus, the, okay. This is web stuff, but everything kind of goes back and forth because everything I've seen on the mobile web, people screw up in mobile apps. I've been working on app optimization since, I don't know, since Android 3. So like I've been helping what people speed up their apps as well. So I'm gonna show you stuff from the web, but I'll, I'll walk you through how it works for, for um, apps as well. But anyway, inside Lighthouse, there's four image optimizations image quality, format, sizing, and lazy loading. And they, you get a score from zero to 100, where 100 is good and zero is bad. All right. So web page test is this awesome tool to test web pages. You guys don't build web pages, so I won't talk about it. But if you know people who build web pages, they should check it out, because it's a great tool to figure out how to speed up web pages. But on top of that, there's this tool that scans 4 million websites a month and all of the data about every single request, all of the images, all the JavaScript, all the crap that's on the web pages is thrown into this SQL database. So you can query it and figure out what the web is built of. And so I did that looking at these four optimizations to see what's being served to mobile devices. And I see exactly the same stuff in mobile apps. So it, 
most of the time, the same content that's being served to the app is also being served to the mobile website. So Google recommends that all images are saved at 85% quality. So if you build an image and when you save it in Photoshop, you can lower the slider on the quality. Obviously, when you lower the quality, you're losing pixels. But Google's found that 85%, nobody can tell a difference. So if you've got an image up on your server when you're serving to the web, to the app, you should save it at 85% quality. There are a bunch of tools. Image Magic will do it for you. Uh, Cloudinary is a cloud-based tool. You upload the full-size image. You change one parameter in the URL, and it builds the 85% image for you. And so here's a picture of Riga, 3.6 megabytes. The projector looks a little pixelated, but it's actually a really beautiful image, I promise. When I save it at 85%, it looks exactly the same. Yeah, even with the pixels, look, you know, the pixelization looks the same. But it's half the size, and no one can tell the difference. It still looks great on a web page. Um, when I look out on the web, 33% of the web is completely failing at this. It's about the same in mobile apps. Um, I'll talk about some of the tools that I use in mobile apps to, um, to optimize that. I, when I worked at AT&T, we built a tool called Video Optimizer. It actually works for all content inside an app, and it'll actually tell you if your images are too large. Um, but the median website would be three seconds faster and use 420K less data, right? So if you can speed up your app, the load of that page in your app, or, or a page on the, on the web, that makes a lot of sense. When I go to lower quality, you can't really tell on this projector, but 50% looks bad and so does 20%. We don't want to use those. Um, but wouldn't it be cool to find the sweet spot in between 85% and 20%? And there's actually tools that'll do that. It'll find the area where the human eye can't tell a difference. So you can lower the quality to where we as humans can't tell. That means the image is super small, but still looks beautiful for everybody. Structural similarity is one of the tools. Google has a tool called Booterougly. All of Google's compression tools are invented by Swiss data scientists, so they name everything after Swiss pastries. So Booterougly, I guess, is a Swiss pastry. Um, and there are a bunch of tools from the command line, from a cloud-based tool that will give you that structural similarity. And when I do that, this is what the structural similarity looks like. It's 400K less than the 85% that Google recommends. So by saving 400K, that's going to make that load a lot faster, whether it's in the app or in the browser. And just testing those downloads on a 3G connection. So this is a web page test. You pop in a URL. You test on a device. They actually have real Android devices and real iOS devices in Virginia. So I'm testing on a real Motorola G4. And the download time goes from 21 seconds to 9.5 seconds just by optimizing the image. Right, so I've, I've sped up that delivery by twice as much. Um, next one is image formats. I see all sorts of crazy stuff when it comes to image formats on the web and in apps. Um, but let's just talk about a few of them. These are the different image sizes that I see. Um, that JPEGs are by far the most used um, on the web and in apps, um, even though like Android would support WebP natively. Um, vector graphics are really cool. I don't know if they're in Android yet. SVGs? They are? All right. You should use SVGs for um, uh, vector shapes because they're infinitely scalable. You can draw that small Twitter logo and make them any size, right? Because it's all, um, they're all just shapes. They're vector shapes. And it's an XML document, basically. Um, but you can screw it up. And so I found this one on a web page. It's a target, essentially. and the size seemed a little off, so it's XML, so I opened it up. And you can see there's some stuff. This is a circle. That's another circle. And then you see it says Adobe Illustrator, and then a <laughs> And um, so to optimize it, I clicked right there and deleted everything from the, to the bottom of this document, and I resaved it. And it went from 946K to 1. <laughs> so this is the... Test your stuff before you push it in production, because obviously one kilobyte is going to download a lot faster than almost a megabyte. Um, of course, it's XML, so you can gzip it. Or if you're into, you know, you can use Brotly, which is a Google compression that's compatible with gzip. And Brotly means bread in German, so you know, 
Swiss compression algorithms. Um, but anyway, you can get it down to like less than half a K, right? And they were serving 946 K. You scroll a little further down on the page, orange, right? Again, 946 kilobytes. They're serving 1.8 megabytes of circles on their web page. Um, if you're into the web, you can use CSS to style the red one to make it orange. So you could be like two lines of code and you know 500 bytes of um, SVG and you get this, or you can do 1.8 megabytes. This is just gets down to like test before you push live. Um, PNGs, here's something really funny that I found on the web, but I've also seen it in native apps. You work really, really hard to optimize your image. You get it all perfect and then you take a screenshot of it and post it to production. So this is a web page that has screenshot underscore 2018-12-17, uh, 944 AM, right? So they, they just took a screenshot with their Mac and pushed it to production. Um, you shouldn't do this. PNGs generally aren't optimized. The screenshot tool on the Mac, while super convenient, like this is a screenshot so that I could put it right into my PowerPoint presentation. Um, I found 112,000 of these on the web. So like people are doing this a lot. Um, I sampled 1,500 of them. 50% um, of them could be, 86% uh, could be 50% smaller, right? These files are not optimized for the web. Just by turning it to a JPEG, I made it 50% smaller. Right? And if it's 50% smaller, it's going to download faster, it's going to show up faster on the screen, and your customers are happier. So we shouldn't, do, we shouldn't put screenshots on the web. Um, if you build on Android, WebP is an awesome format because it's, uh, it's got better compression than JPEG, and it still has all the same quality. It's based on the VP8 video format. It used to be that it was just Android and Chrome, if you're building on the web, now you've got Edge and Firefox as well. Safari's thinking about it. So if you're an iOS developer, you should use JPEG 2000, which gives you similar compression um, uh, improvement, usually about 40% smaller than a JPEG. So if you're building on iOS, you can save as a JPEG 2000. If you're building for um, Android, you can save it as a WebP, and you're gonna get a lot smaller images, which means the pay, the, those, those views on your app are gonna load a lot faster. So if I take that picture of Riga, I do structural similarity, I turn it into WebP, now it's under a megabyte, right? So I'm cutting out 400K almost every single time I do an optimization. Um, and you, can, you may not be able to see in the back, but it took, it's, the structural similarity took nine and a half seconds. This took seven seconds to load in the browser. So it's loading faster and faster as I make the file smaller. Obviously, smaller files download faster. And so on the web, you would do something like serve the WebP and have a fallback to the JPEG in a picture tag. But you guys don't build for the web, so I won't talk about that. Um, except for I just did. Sorry. Um, on the web, most people are not building for WebP or JPEG 2000. Most websites, two thirds of the web are completely failing on this. And so obviously there's a huge potential optimization on the web. Um, the median website that failed there would be four seconds faster and use 600K less data. So just by switching your JPEGs to WebP or your JPEGs to JPEG 2000 for iOS, you can make your, pay, your, your views load a lot faster because the images will be so much smaller. Probably the one that makes the most sense for mobile developers is resizing the images, right? If I've got this image and I do all those optimizations, it's uh, 1.6 megabytes. Originally, I do all my optimizations, it's 800K, but it's still 13 megapixels, right? I'm still serving 13 megapixels of data to a mobile device. And so in my contrived example right here, um, I served 13 megapixels, only 500,000 show up on the screen. So the phone has to throw away 12 and a half million pixels before it can show up on the screen. And obviously that's gonna take time and it wastes download, right? You're throwing away 95% of the download. The closest example I can think of that is when you order something online and you get this giant box on your doorstep and there's like eight meters of brown paper inside before you get to the, like, the tiny little thing in the bottom of the box. We're doing this 
in mobile apps. We're doing it on the web. It's happening all the time. I don't have the example in here, but I was playing around with uh, Flickster, which is an Android app. And uh, one of the thumbnails was like 900 kilobytes when it could have been three and still looked great, right? So there's ways we can optimize these things so it shows up great. The second thing about all of this is when you have to throw away 12 million pixels, you're firing up the CPU. And the CPU has to go through all the processes to throw away 95% of the image. And in Chrome, you can measure how long that takes. And so on the desktop, it takes, well, it takes about 14 seconds to download this 16 megapixel image. One million pixels show up on the screen. On the desktop, it took 78 milliseconds to decode the image and throw away all that extra data. On a Motorola G4, which is you know mid-range, a few years old device, 218 milliseconds. On the Alcatel One X, which is a um, Android Go device, you can buy them today in the store. Um, I was just in the UK at a store, and it was like they were like 45 pounds, so like 40, 50 euros for one of these devices. They're super cheap, so they're selling a lot of them, but the processor is so slow. Uh, I have a, there's a review of one of these for the Alcatel One X that says your battery life is going to be so awesome because you're going to hate using your phone. <laughs> um, it took 820 milliseconds to decode the image, right? Almost another second of added time before it showed up on the screen to throw away all those pixels. So that's wasting extra time. It's probably heating up the phone like it's using the battery. You know, the CPU's fired up, so it's using the battery. The phone's getting warm while they're browsing your app. Like, not a good thing. People don't like that. Um, as we all know, there are a lot of different devices out there. Each one of these boxes is an Android device that hit Akamai over one day. The size of the box is the number of devices. So these are all Samsungs. And then there are a lot, of, and the color is how fast the CPU is. So there are a lot of really slow CPU devices out there with different screen sizes. Of course, what we would do so we build a bunch of different screen sizes. In this case, I built a bunch of different images, 25K different in size. The right one gets delivered to the device. I only throw away 100,000 pixels. It's going to download a lot faster. There are a lot of tools out there that'll do this for you. This is re responsive breakpoints. I said build a bunch of images from 200 to 1400, 25 kilobytes apart. It gives me a zip file of all the images. If you wanted to put this as part of your content management, you could just upload it. It would do it all for you and put it into your CMS for you. Um, maybe you don't need 20 different images. Like that's a, that's a lot of images. Like it's great for a demo, but it's not really great for real life. So look at your analytics, figure out what size devices are hitting it, hitting your app and find the right size images. You don't want to be serving four megabyte images as thumbnails. I've seen it in mobile apps. It happens a lot more frequently than we'd really like to admit. So of course, when I resize it for a Motorola uh, G4, it goes from one megabyte to 120K, seven seconds to two seconds. So we're getting this image instead of 21 seconds with none of the work down to two seconds by resizing it, changing the format, and lowering the quality. We made it 10 times faster. When we look at responsive images on the web, 60% of the web's doing it, 20% is not. The 20% that is not would be two and a half seconds faster, 400K less data, right? All of these things add up. 400K less data every time you do one of these things is really gonna speed up the delivery of your web page or of your native app. Lazy loading is something that's probably pretty common that you guys have heard of. Um, the idea is, if you're loading up a whole view, don't load the ones that are below the fold because a lot of people won't see those right away and then load them as they scroll close to when they're showing up on the screen. If you only have to load two images on the view load, the, pages, the, the view is gonna load a lot faster. Most websites don't do this. Um, the median web page would be three and a half seconds faster, 500K less data if you just don't load these images initially and then load them in later. So apps that do this, Medium does this, Facebook does this. We've seen this on a lot of different um, apps and sites. So this is actually Google image search on my phone. 
When you search for cats in costume, it gives you these preview images until the images of the cats load. And you can see it's orange for the cat that's dressed up like a pumpkin, pink for the bunny rabbit cat, or, or green for the, the crocodile cat, right? You know images are coming, but they haven't loaded yet. Um, pretty common way of doing this. If you want to go fancy, you can build <laughs> you can build SVGs. And the great thing, this is an SVG that instead of just being green, sort of has the texture of the waterfall. So you can do fun things like this. You can do this um, natively in your app. Um, and then because this is 900 bytes, it loads almost instantaneously. And then you can wait, then the image will load in afterwards. And I've seen examples of this where this just loads up instantaneously with the text. So your users don't have to wait for an image. You don't have to have a placeholder with like something that says an image is coming. They get an image and then the full size image pops in right almost right afterwards. Uh, people really respond to that. It increases engagement and, and uh, in increases sales and all those other great things. So really quickly, this is on the web. But this is an example of how lazy loading works. This is a web page that I built. And these are all the different views. And on the web, when I load this in Chrome, you can see the text loads. And the text is constantly reflowing. And if you look, these images have loaded down here when the stuff that you're looking at as a user hasn't loaded in yet. right? If you're a user of this web page, you want all of this stuff that you see when the page loads to be there first. You don't care about the cow four views down because that's not something you'll, you, you'll see initially. You want everything to load from top to bottom. This is coming soon in Chrome. So if you are a web developer, this is coming really soon. Chrome will actually load the images, the first 2K of every image, lay out the entire page right away, and then the images load from top to bottom. So the cow only loads when it's at that point in the page. So that's pretty exciting that it's coming in the browser. It will probably come into apps as well. But in the meantime, you should always load the images from top to bottom, um, unlike what the web does today. Animated GIFs, which are loved by everyone inside apps and inside the web. Uh, this is Nora, my goat, back in Seattle. Uh, the video is 1.4 megabytes. I turn it into a GIF because we need GIFs of goats on the internet. And it's 3.8 megabytes. And so the reason for this is if we go back to 1990, the GIF spec says the GIF format is not intended as a platform for animation, even though you can do it. So like the spec says we shouldn't use animated GIFs. But you know, whatever, that that's, ship has sailed. And the reason it's horrible is that if you have 15 frames per second in your GIF, it's literally 15 GIFs that get flipped through every second. So it's not super optimized for delivery. So what do you do? You turn it into a movie. 256 colors. You remove the audio channel because goat's eating. Rather unattractive sound. Um, but also GIFs are silent, so it doesn't make any difference. It's 250K, so it's going to load a lot faster. Right in your, it's just going to load a lot faster. And you may be thinking, well, you know, Twitter uses animated GIFs. For those in the back, it says GIF in the bottom corner. Um, the thing is, Twitter's lying to us. Um, if you open this up into Chrome DevTools, um, they're serving MP4s. Right? It's GIF the f medium, not GIF the format. And the reason they're serving that as an MP4 is that it's 400K versus a couple megabytes. So on the web, you just serve it as a video with the video tag, loop autoplay muted. Um, you can also put it in the image tag, and this will play in Safari if you build for the web. Most of you don't. But you can actually put movies in the image tag, which is kind of cool. But that only works on Safari. But let's look at what the load time is. The animated GIF takes 22 seconds. The looping video takes four and a half seconds. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? The amount of data is 3.8 megabytes to 250K, right? That's just going to load faster. It's going to lead to happier customers. We should do that if we can. Um, I don't know if this shows up on the, 
in apps. But in, on Android, you can turn on data saver mode. And when you turn on data saver mode in Chrome, I have to look to see if this happens in apps. I haven't actually looked. It sends a new header that says save data on. And why that's useful is if your customers are saying serve less data, maybe you turn off the movies or something else. They're saying don't give me all that content, serve me a lighter version of your content. Um, and this web page in Belgium found that 5% of his users had save data turned on. That's all users, you know, desktop, iOS, Android, 5% have this turned on. If they want that turned on, you can serve smaller images. So with Cloudinary, if you use Q Auto and they see the save data header, they get a little more aggressive and they make that image 45K smaller. So there are a lot of ways to make images smaller and they still look great. This image looks great. This is a projector thing, I think. It should look really beautiful. It shouldn't look pixelated at all. Another thing you can do is there's a network info API. And I know this works in Android. Um, these are the, the JavaScript ones, but I know you can get this in Android. But you can figure out the speed of the network connection. And so if, you're, if your customers are on a slow network connection, don't serve them all the content. Um, I had a chance to spend a month in rural Ireland. And my Airbnb said, high speed Wi-Fi. Great, I can work. Um, didn't say that it was connected to a 3G router that was on edge. <laughs> um, when I put my phone on Wi-Fi, I didn't see videos on Facebook or Twitter. The animated GIFs didn't autoplay. None of that stuff worked because my network connection was so slow. They knew that I'd get frustrated and I'd stop using their app. As soon as I went into town, all that stuff came back and worked really, really well. But they were monitoring how fast my network speed was and they knew that if they tried to autoplay videos, I would just get frustrated and I wouldn't use it. So look at this. If, you're, if your customers are on a really high latency connection, <coughs> a really slow downlink, maybe change what kind of content they're getting because it makes a difference. So in conclusion, we can optimize image quality, format, and sizing to make our images smaller so they download faster but still have awesome quality. You can lazy load them. You should turn your animated GIFs into movies. Um, monitor your customers' headers. Um, I have a video talk to. Same ideas go for video. Um, I've seen D retina videos being delivered to mobile devices that don't need to be retina videos because most people don't play them. A lot on mobile uh, websites, I see mobile, I see the, um, I see the video downloaded but never displayed on the screen. That probably wouldn't happen in an app. Um, streaming is always better because you can control the bit rates. Uh, anyway, in, uh, the tooling I use for all of this, I use web page tests in the HTTP archive to analyze what's being served to mobile devices today. And here are a bunch of the tools you can use to optimize images, image magic, structural similarity, lazy loading, responsive breakpoints, and then cloudinary. In conclusion, Images can be beautiful and fast, so you can deliver content really, really quickly. People will love them. If you're really into building with video and images, Cloudinary has a media developer expert program. You can email them, learn more about it if you're interested. Um, but with that, I'd be happy to take any questions on, on images or anything. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. First of all, thanks for the really amazing presentation. Thanks. Uh, I was wondering, you mentioned when you shot the photo with the waterfall that was uh, with the preview. Yeah. Like. yeah. You mentioned that it can be loaded together with the test, like uh, to, with the text, not, not as a yeah. uh, base 64 encoding can be lining or any other? Well, it's an SVG file, so SVG is a text file. So it's essentially XML, so you can inline that straight into. You know, I wouldn't recommend base 64 encoding because that makes files bigger. Okay. Just but like right yeah no that's these um i'll go back really quick this is an svg file so it's a text file so it's xml so you can just plop that right in you can make it a background file a background image and it's a text file so you can just inline that it, on the web you'd inline it as html in an app you'd make it a text asset or something like that that you could download but they're super small okay if i may I'm on the yeah go ahead um, most of us are mobile developers, and um, some apps have a lot of images bundled together with an app. 
I know that all those methods uh, to, to lower the, the size of images affect the, the size of the APK, but it's, it's only one time download. Uh, right. And the modern uh, image formats like like uh, WebP, they use less. The uh, the images are smaller. Yes. In terms of size, but they're more like CPU affecting. I haven't seen that they're that much more CPU affecting for them to load. Okay. It's it's within. I've seen a little bit more, so. Um, that is a balance. So it's a balance when it's already bundled in the APK, right? Because then it's already been downloaded. But if, say, for example, that WebP takes twice as long on the CPU to get it on the screen, but it downloads over the network twice as fast, the network is always going to be slower than the CPU on the device, even with that really slow Alcatel device, probably. You'll probably always save time. You're always going to have somebody on a 3G connection. Right, and if you're downloading a 400K image on a 3G connection, it's gonna take forever. And then 100 milliseconds on the CPU is nothing, right? Compared to 200K downloaded on a 3G connection. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, do you know there is a tool for this uh, placeholder, placeholder, a Fusion placeholder? Yeah, so uh, there's a open source oh, okay. library and it's just, there are all sorts of tools that are built on top of it. So if you go to the README, you'll see it's constantly evolving what's being added to this to Squib. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways you can uh, automate this as part of your of your processing. Yeah. I have a, one question uh, from the mobile perspective. So I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it makes sense uh, since. Basically, requesting a image is uh, basically a get request. Right. Uh, you can always specify the resolution of your device and get the uh, you know resolution right. compressed to the size of your screen, right? Right. So yes. You don't care about the high quality image. For example, you're not displaying a full screen image where you can zoom in, but uh, just displaying a thumbnail. I think you can save also data on such tricks, right? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah you can definitely make them a lot smaller. Um, You know, I've seen many, many apps where they use the thumbnails and they're downloading like 600K images, right? And we all know that for an image that's, you know, when it's the size of your thumbnail, you can usually get it under 10K without anyone noticing a difference. I've also, I've seen apps that were like, there were music apps where they downloaded the album art and they had a small, medium and a large version of the album art. But every single time you loaded the album, it downloaded the small, the medium, and the large version of the image every single time. If you're gonna do that, just download the large, right? Don't worry about the small and the medium. But they just downloaded all of the album art every single time. Um, I've seen apps uh, that do a redirect for every single image. And so someone was saying, I was using this app and it's really, really slow and I can't figure out why the images take so long. And so it was requesting the image and the server was like, no, we moved it. And then they had to request a second place. Well, you're adding a couple hundred milliseconds of round trip every single time. And it was actually noticeable to people who were using the application. So really, if you can get your content down as fast as possible, people will notice the difference. Another example of images that was weird, but I think it's pretty straightforward now, is um, about five years ago, the Netflix app on Android all of the images had the right headers to cache the, the movie posters for every single movie, but they weren't actually caching it in the Android app. So you'd fire up the app, it would download six megabytes of resources, you'd kill the app, you'd start it five seconds later, it would download the same six megabytes of resources. It took, obviously added you know, 10, 15 seconds to the startup time, once they added the caching, you know, that second startup was instantaneous. Uh, you know, a huge improvement on performance. They also turned the images into WebP, so the first download became like one and a half megabytes instead of seven or six and a half. Cool. Well, thank you very much.